Why don't you tell us a little about your upbringing on how you went to the FBI? All right. I was born in Cuba. Actually, uh, I lived under communism, under Fidel, for about three years before we were able to leave in 1961. And when we came here, we didn't speak uh, a word of English. And uh, my pa my father had a job in uh, New York, actually at three, in order to get us, you know, so this was going to be a temporary hold that we were going to go back to Cuba when this banana republic was over. Well, needless to say, that banana republic is still there. Yep. So we um, decided to stay in America, learn English. And then I went on going to a school up in Washington Heights, uh, New York. And then we moved to the Bronx where I went to a Catholic school. And there's where I started playing football. And I had the opportunity to get several scholarships and uh, went to the University of Richmond. And it was there where I saw the movie Serpico. And I knew that that moment in time, I wanted to be into law enforcement. Um, it was kind of like a cool guy, you no know, Al Pacino, long hair, beard, had the pretty girl with the motorcycle and uh, an old sheep English dog to add to that. So I said, this is what I want to do. But unfortunately, back in the 70s, nobody was hiring and the FBI refused to return my call. So what happened in 1976 or so, or the end of 75, I was watching Univision and I saw this uh, American non-native Spanish-speaking FBI agent saying they were looking for Spanish speakers in the bureau. So I called the bureau wow. right away and I said, look, you got me, you got my application. I'm ready to go. I meet the bill. They got back to me and said, well, you're not um, an American citizen. So I became an American citizen, which is one of the most proud moments of my life. And then I told them, I said, now I have it. Let's get this going. And in 1980, I became a special agent of the FBI. Now, let me ask you this. Right prior to that, what were you doing before you became a special agent? Well, because I couldn't land a job in the police department, I wound up working in some colleges as director of testing. Then I got involved. I actually got into the police department at Union County Prosecutor's Office. But it was short-lived. I was only there about a year. And then the FBI came calling. And, of course, the rest is uh, I, the dream of my life job. I love it. I love the fact that it is the dream of your life job. Now, Jack, if I was in high school with you, who were you in high school? If we were in 10th grade, 11th grade, who, who was Jack Falcone? Well, at first, Jack, Jack Falcone Garcia. was who, always, Jack uh, he's always a jovial guy. You know, I break Kinda. balls. I, I I like hanging around with a bunch of the guys, have fun. I played sports. Uh, I didn't have a weight issue like I developed later in my bureau career. So I, I'm always an outgoing social person. So I, I was not a bully, but I actually protected those who bullied, you know, that were bullied. And uh, um, and that was the kind of guy people kind of gravitated to me because of my size. I was this big mama Luke, six, four. Back then I was around 240, 250. And, you know, it was uh, some kind of guy that people gravitate to. Makes sense. So you bullied bullies is what you did. That is correct. OK. And that that apparently didn't change for the rest of your life. You enjoyed bullying bullies. Well, yeah, I guess, yeah, so you're right. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so now you go you go into the FBI, you got your dream job, you're excited about it. <clears throat> At what point do you get some of these assignments that leads you to working with the mob? How soon did you get a big assignment? Well, keep in mind that Hoover died in, the, in 72. So the Bureau did not really mirror the demographics in our society. So here I come in, this kid who speaks Spanish fluently. The kid doesn't look like an FBI agent. I didn't look your typical guy or dressed alike. I grew up in Havana. I was grew up in Washington Heights and the Bronx. So I had a little something with it. And right around that time, the FBI got involved in working narcotics, which was the early 80s. So I was the perfect guy. Here I am. I speak Spanish fluently. I know the streets. I'm able to, I'm a social person. So I immediately started working cases that were involving narcotics. And that's kind of where I, uh, I found my little niche in the FBI. And, and at, okay. So when that did, did take place, what was your first project that you got in? And when it happened, was it kind of like you were a fiend saying, I'm a hooked. I, I want to do more. I'm in love with like, at what point did you know your job as an FBI agent, you were hooked on saying, this is exactly what I thought it was going to be. You know, it was immediately. I went up working a long-term national security case, so I really can't discuss it. You know, Patrick, and 
And I apologize for that. But it was where I was working on the cover. I was living on my own. I had a fake identification, just the way that cloak and dagger, just that whole movement of being an undercover and fooling people to believing the person you're trying to portray. It, it was just so uh, enticing to me. And it was became like my adrenaline drug. It was something that I drew my high, my, my, this is what I want to do. I, and I just couldn't wait to do it more. And again, because there weren't that many people who spoke the language like I did, I was a shoe in. So I just started growing from one case to the other. Each, each case I looked as a challenge and uh, I enjoyed working with the men and women in the FBI. Uh, so it was a perfect fit. It was my little niche. Some guys are good, maybe working wiretaps, other goods in surveillance. Well, undercover became my my home. So, at at what point after you became an FBI agent in 1980 did you get the call for uh, dealing going undercover with the mob? Well, how many it, years later? Oh, it was back. The first time I got the call was in the year 2000, 2001, because again, all my expertise was working narcotics, either posing as a drug dealer, a transporter, a money launderer. Then I started doing police corruption cases, murder for hires, Asian organized. Crime. So I was all over the map. I never worked traditional organized crime. Actually, it was all new to me because I uh, here I am, you know, with my language skill, this was my little place to go. So I worked the Russian case and one of the agents in that Russian case said, Listen, we are have a situation up in the Bronx. We have a strip club, and that's being shaken down by some Albanians and some wise guy. You interested? So I said, well, what do you want me to do? You know, and he said, uh, well, we want you to go in there, maybe t uh, do some payoffs and see where it takes us to, but pretty much take the Albanians out. Well, I said yes. It was the latter part of my career, and next thing you know, Yes, I paid off the mob guys to keep the Albanians away. And just things started happening and growing. Before I knew it, I was driving the captain of the Gambino crime family around. That's how it got started. Got yes. it. 